a few more images there from uh, the water park and this is another one of um, Swan Pool same as the, the last bit of painting I did just from a different angle so again we got some um, very small sky more water this time than sky a few background trees and then a bit of a foreground some nice uh, fallen branches and stuff in the water a few trees here and a great big trunk on the right hand side framing it nicely let's have a look at the materials it's all the usual kit always arranged the same way around ultramarine, lemon yellow Payne's grey, lizarding crimson, raw sienna burnt umber light red, Cutman watercolours got three brushes, three quarter flat Number three rig, a large hake, jar of water, a tissue, and 15 by 11 Fabriano, and our tea towel drawing at the top up there. So, first of all, let's uh, stretch our paper as we go along. So, I'm just going to wet it all over nice and evenly. This will stretch evenly then, and then by the time we've done the background. It will have stretched sufficiently so I can just pull it tight, refix it, and then it will stay flat then for the rest of the painting. So, a nice back general background colour. I'll go for raw sienna, bang that in, no real order to it, and then I'm going to go ultramarine, get it in the sky, and then pull some of that down into the uh, water because obviously this is going to be water down there. Maybe just a touch of ultramarine and Payne's grey just to vary it a bit in the sky. And then try and catch hold of those bits of water that are coming down the page. It just gives a bit of variation. And I'll just leave that area light there, I think, because of the trees. The, the trees on the left, it'll, the, the uh, branches will silhouette nicely against the sky. Um, let's put a few little clouds in as well, or oh, alizarin crimson, Payne's grey, not too much water. And then that can just pop in there. That'll do, just a little reflection in the water of that colour. That'll do for that. And maybe even. Make it a bit more interesting, we can take a tissue. And put a few little clouds in. Also use this as an opportunity to soak up any more water that's dripping down the page. Try and keep it subtle, don't overdo it, like with uh, most things with the painting. It's, it's so easy to overdo, you have to resist the temptation. I'll do it maybe a big bigger on this side. What they'll do now, stop messing with it. So, next, I'm going to use all those sky colours. Just a bit of everything and start whacking in the uh, background trees. So we're coming fairly high up, slightly lower than in the actual picture. And I'm just putting down the reflections as I go along. And that'll save me then. I need to make those colours up afterwards. So it's still, it's still. If I look along it, along the side here, I can still see there's a slight um, dampness on the paper, so I can still get fairly soft uh, edges and reflections when I pull them down. Okay, I'm just trying to vary the colour now as I go along. Also trying to vary the height as well. Just 
putting down the reflections as I go. Let's clean the brush now, get back some lighter colours. So the paper's lighter, the, the sky is lighter, so you see that because it's lighter, I'll put the uh, the trees are slightly lighter here as well. So I'll see if I can sort of follow that. That sort of logic. Slightly. I don't want to worry about them too much here because they're going to be covered up by the uh, by the foreground tree on the left. So I think I'll leave the background at that for now. Maybe just a few little flicks with the fingernail, just to just to suggest the uh, few little tree trunks. And then just putting the reflection straight down. Again, try not to overdo it. it doesn't need many. So now the paper's stretched, I can just pull it tight, refix it, and I'm ready to go again. So it's back to the uh, the hike, and then next I'm going to put these uh, trunks in on the left. So I'm going to bother you using the um, the air dryer. It, it's dry sufficiently to uh, continue with the foreground so it's just just enough water on the brush just to keep all the airs together and then I'm just giving a nice dark colour ultra, um, ultramarine and burnt umber and you've got a nice chisel edge like that and then you can just go straight up with your, uh, your trunks and branches You can do this with a rigger if you want, it's entirely up to you. But there's quite a lot of them so I'll, I find it a lot quicker and easier to use the, um, the hike. Just fill these gaps in on the right hand side, left hand side. There's a few more, just one going right off over there. I'm going to switch to the uh, the rigger brush, same colours, plenty of water on the brush, and then just continue with some of these. To finish it off, I'm going to clean the ache, scuff it up on the tea towel, so it's sort of almost dry. Hair is going everywhere, and then just go into the same colours again. And then just very lightly just pop those little leaves and twigs and stuff. Maybe just continuing those background trees along there, but I think I'll just I'll just say that I don't think it makes too much difference. Just fill it in a bit like that. And 
there's a bit of a bit of green down there, so I'm just going to pop that in. I'm going to bring the ears back together, put the excess off, and then just start on this foreground. Uh, raw sienna, a bit of ultramarine, a bit too blue that was. And again, just trying to keep it varied. Try not to go over the same piece more than once. So it keeps that variation then. If you keep going over the same piece, you'll end up with all the same colour. the muddy bits on the shore, burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine, there's a little bit of mud. Now we've got, there's a, a sort of big branch that's fallen into the water. I'll just pop that in. That goes something like something like that. And a, a reflection of it. Down there. Just a few more twigs and stuff. Right hand side, we've got this big it's like a big uh, tree trunk. Got this big trunk now to go in. That's sort of going right up. Right there, like that. Let's put a fork on it and a little piece, piece going up like that. Something like that. And there's a few. Switch back to the uh, the rigger. There's, there's loads of little twigs and branches and reeds and stuff. Darker areas down there, I think. I think all it then is 
just going to stick a couple of little birds. In the sky. Signature. Oh, pull that one. Pull that one finished. Let's have a closer look at it. So the first thing that strikes me about this is um, see the difference between these trunks here when I put them in with a the paper. Before normally I'd have dried the paper, but because it, it was still damp, it's come out slightly light. Now that was exactly the same mix. Um, and you see how much lighter it is compared to that. I should have dried it using the air dryer and then put these in and it would have come out nice darker and silhouetted more against the light sky. But that's a mind. That's why I put in this extra sort of layer here to try and get, get a bit more contrast in it. But then subsequently that sort of mucked up the foreground a little bit. Also I think I'd have preferred just one big trunk going up here. Like there is in the photo. But never mind. The rest of it, composition wise, it's it's very similar. So I tried to make the sky a little bit more interesting, and then the background trees and the reflections into the water, putting them at the same time helps uh, stops you having to remix, trying to get those same colours. Well, I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Any questions, please ask, and I'll see you again soon.